I know this doesn't really come across in the stuff I say on this show, but the majority of my friends are religious. You know, at least the majority of my in-person friends. I mean, I'm American. I grew up in the Deep South. The vast majority of people I've met in my life are religious. And I've had a few friends that suddenly got way busier when they learned I was an atheist, or worse yet, a registered Democrat. But most of the time, the subject of religion doesn't come up. So it's not like it's typically a barrier to friendship. And I guess many of you can probably sympathize with being the, like, the token atheist friend. That's me. I am the one person they know that's an atheist, or, or more accurately, I'm the one person they know that's identified themselves as an atheist at some point. So I get all the weird, but then who do you pray to questions all the fucking time. I have friends honestly ask me why I don't rape and murder people often. But the most common token atheist question I get is some variation of, but what about space Disneyland? So this came up again a couple of weeks ago. A buddy of mine since college still finds it amazing that I don't believe that there's a God. You know, I, I love the asshole, but he honestly seems to think that I'm lying. You know, that I secretly do believe in God. So he's constantly trying to trip me up. You know, he says shit like, like, okay, but who do you thank when something good happens for you? And, and he's not asking me because he wants to know. He actually thinks I'm going to say, well, uh, God, of course. And then he's going to go like, gotcha, gotcha. So, so shortly after we settle into the new place, I call him up to give him my new address, and we wind up in another one of these, well, if you're an atheist, then who died for your sins conversations? And, and his puzzler this time around was, well, what do you think happens when you die? Now, this is a tough question to answer, but only because religious people think you're just fucking with them when you answer it. You stop being alive. But you're not, because that's the unabridged fucking answer, and expecting more than that kind of assumes the premise that we all started off knowing that you rejected, Right. So I tell him that in those words. He says, what do you think happens when we die? I say, we stop being alive. He laughs a bit, and then he adds, no, seriously. So I have to walk him through this very simple premise a half dozen ways before he finally starts to understand that I'm suggesting that mortality is a thing. So he further clarifies this by asking what he probably assumed was another gotcha question. He says, so you think when your mother dies, you're never going to see her again? Now, I, I just want to point out that Christian debaters are always way too quick to theoretically kill off my mom. This has nothing to do with the larger point I'm making, but I find it really weird and at least a little creepy. Not sure why my mom is always their go-to dead person, but she is. Anyway, so I further spell out how dying works by affirming that, yes, with the exception of a possible viewing at the funeral, I don't think I'm going to see my mom after she's done being alive. And he just stops for a long minute to take it in. And while he's doing that, I'm wondering what the fuck he thought atheist meant for the last decade and a half that I've known the dude. And finally, after an uncomfortably long break, he says, well, then how do you handle it when people die then? Again, this is a question I encounter all the time. Now, it, it, this one actually usually comes from people who are new to atheism, but I feel that quite often. So I tell them, uh, you know, I get really sad. Uh, and then as time goes on, I'm less and less sad, less and less often, but I never quite stop being sad altogether. And that answer fucks them all up because that's the same thing he does. So we go back and forth a little while while he tries to coax more of an answer out of me. But that's all I've got. How do I cope with death? Slightly better than average as near as I can tell. I mean, it's amazing how many religious people seem to miss the fact that they too get sad when people die. You know, despite religion's constant claims to the contrary, they're no better equipped to handle mortality than those of us who aren't looking forward to an afterlife. All they got is a codified set of please and thank you type responses that obviate the obligation to find sympathetic words in the moment. You know, it's, it's like two guys plummeting to their deaths next to each other, and one of them turns and says, bet you wish you had one of these invisible parachutes like mine, huh? You seem to be falling really fast. You know, so after a painful, like, looking at the clock twice in the same minute type of back and forth, he finally grasps the extent of my answer, and I can tell that even after he gets it, he wants to challenge it. You know, not whether it's a fact or not, mind you, but whether or not I believe it. Now, a lot of you probably can't sympathize with this much because a lot of you aren't open about your atheism and some of you don't have to deal with this shit. Um, you know, I'm not trying to be judgy about that or whatever. I, I understand that a lot of you aren't in a position where that's really an option. But I bring this up because I'm sure a lot of people are listening along and thinking, man, Noah, you've got some stupid friends. And, and, and I do. I'll, I, I'll certainly admit that. But this guy isn't one of them. He's a really smart dude. And that's exactly why he keeps asking so many stupid questions. See, for religious people, the you know, smart religious people anyway, nothing Nothing threatens their faith more than a person like me. You know, in my experience, smart people most often cling to their faith because they think that they need it. They think that they couldn't handle the thought of finality without it, or they think that they, you know, they need it to keep their marriage on track, or it's the only thing that got them through their addiction or their depression or whatever. And here they see me, 
You know, a guy who's been in a happy marriage for a couple of decades, a guy who's generally enjoying his life, a guy who doesn't seem to be rife with morally reprehensible habits that are catching up to him, a guy who seems to be getting through life just fine without religion. Now, the only way they know of to dismiss this not in their logic is to either demonize atheists or pretend they don't exist. Now, I've known this guy way too long for him to demonize me, so he convinces himself that I don't exist, or more accurately, that my atheism doesn't exist. That's the only option he has left. And that's why I sit patiently through all these inane reflections phrasings of the same stupid question because if he sees me flying around long enough just by flapping my ears at some point he can't help but realize that there was never any magic in that feather